Welcome to the first of our occasional series of textile talks. Um, the textile I've got with me today is an Indian sari. Um, it's a big textile, as you can see. It's about a metre wide and about um, six or seven metres long. And it's a, it's a piece of cloth which is designed to be wrapped around the body. Um, it's very light in weight because India is a hot place. And the decorative part of the textile is all concentrated at this end, which is the piece that um, you fold around your body finally and is the part that you see. So you've got a, a decorative border here called a palu and, um, and edges here and here which are also exposed when the textile is folded. Um, it's all made in plain woven silk, apart from where we've got designs which are done in uh, supplementary weft um, with a twill um, textile structure. Now this, book, this particular sari was made last year um, by Royal Brocades in, uh, in Gujarat uh, province of India. Um, it's a modern piece as you can see, but it incorporates um, a lot of Indian tradition and design thinking going back several hundred years. So the, the border, the palu here, has got these floral sprays which are um, a characteristically Mughal design element which entered India um, during the 1600s. Um, and then we've got um, what look like leaves, but are actually floral sprays with, with pairs of leaping deer and birds um, filling the body of the piece. Um, so there are elements of Mughal design here, but the textile itself is characteristically Indian. So unlike the um, textiles brought in by the Mughal conquerors into northern India um, in the 1600s and 1700s, which were relatively heavy samet and lampas weaves. This is a very, very lightweight plain weave designed for a hot climate, um, but incorporating some of the um, Mughal design thinking. Um, the interesting thing for this, about this textile for me, and somebody who's interested in looms, um, is to do with the way in which it was woven. Now, I think most people know that um, Indian textiles today are made on jacquard looms. Um, but the word jacquard suggests some kind of um, European style automated loom. But in fact, this is something very, very different to that. And it's really at its core an Indian loom, Indian technology, um, with a, a European jacquard control mechanism grafted on top. Um, and the essence of this loom is a much more ancient Indian design, which goes back a long, long way. At its core, um, it's based around an Indian pit loom, um, which is a style which is also found across Central Asia um, and even, even into parts of North Africa. Um, the weaver sits at the edge of a pit uh, and works a series of um, two or four or sometimes more treadles, which control the ground weave. Um, in the case of this particular fabric, it was woven on the loom with four treadles. So the weaver was able to do plain weave for the body and also create a twill for the pattern. Um, and then in addition to that, it has um, a, a complex system for controlling the warps called a pagia. Now, if you imagine the warps running in this direction horizontally, the pagia is a set of cords which run over the top at right angles to it. Um, and from the pagia, a set of leashes drop down to the warps to control them. Now, this is an extremely ancient system. It's found in various forms all over India um, and also in Central Asia as well, in, in, in Persia, which is now Iran. Um, and it was probably more widespread at one time. Um, and it's used both on horizontal looms and on some types of vertical loom. In its simplest form, um, the weaver can lift those pagia cords by hand to, to make the warp lifts. Um, but with more complex designs, you're looking for some sort of way of recording and controlling that pattern. And the technology which seems to have come from Persia into India 
um, perhaps in the 1500s or 1600s, um, is a kind of drawloom system called a jala. Um, and what this does is it, it adds on top of those pagia chords as another set of chords which control and record the warp notes called the jala. Um, and this system um, seems to have come in um, sometime in the last 400 years or so and is rare in India today but is still occasionally used. Um, so for example, um, if, if an Indian weaver wants to make a, a corner design for a pattern and he doesn't feel like making a new set of jacquard cards, uh, he may still occasionally use the Jala system um, to, to, to record and work that design. Um, but what the majority of Indian workshops today are, are doing is using this classic Indian um, Pagia cross chord system combined with um, a European jacquard device which controls those cross chords. Um, and when you look at the loom, the jacquard is, is the, the feature which stands out. But this is a very different loom to a, to a European jacquard loom or indeed, for that matter, to a Chinese loom. And as I mentioned earlier, at its heart, it, it, it retains those Indian features of the pit and the Pagia cross chords. So essentially, these are um, Indian, ancient Indian features with a European control mechanism grafted on top. Uh, and Indian weavers are using it to tremendous effect today to produce um, textiles like this in small quantities. Um, though we think of automation when we think of jacquard, in fact, this is actually a hand loom. Um, every weft insertion um, is uh, done by hand. Um, the jacquard mechanism is operated one step at a time by a foot treadle. Uh, and the whole process is, is worked by hand and by foot. So it's not an automated loom, it's a true hand loom. Um, and the device enables Indian weavers to produce um, saris like this um, in many different colorways um, from a single loom setup um, and in relatively small quantities without uh, using, needing a lot of expense to, to tool up and, and make large batches. Uh, and this is the technology which is contributing to some of the astonishing creativity um, that Indian weavers are, are, are using today, uh, still, despite the, the presence of, of Chinese and uh, imports from other places, uh, which are taking the bottom end of the market, um, and enabling them to make beautiful individual creations like this. So it's, a, it's really a true handloom. And it's also interesting because it um, incorporates design thinking, and also technologies from so many different sources. Um, you've got um, at its core an ancient Indian loom um, with a Central Asian control mechanism um, supplemented by um, a 19th century European um, jacquard type loom. Um, I think these creations are, are in some ways underappreciated today. Um, they're certainly appreciated by, by their Indian customers, um, but they're and to me, some of the most exciting and most creative textiles um, being made on hand looms today.